Hi, my name is Michael Udadaji, and I have another video. And um, this video is Does Jesus Yahweshua teach us to recognize the serpent and his children? And if that's important, you know, is that important for us to know? In my last video, it was about when our no is no and our yes is yes, we bruise our heel stomping on the head of the devil. So to know who the serpent is or the devil and his children is of some importance. So let's start, take a look at where this all started in Genesis 3.14 and at this point um, Yahweh God is, about, is talking to the, he finished talking to the woman and he's about to talk to the serpent. So, we read here, And Jehovah God saith unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, cursed thou above all the cattle, and above every beast of the field, on thy belly dost thou go. And let's just write that down. Belly dost thou go. Okay, so we kind of get an idea it's a snake. Or it's making reference of a snake. Uh, dost thou go, and dust dost thou, and, and dust thou dost eat. Okay, eats dust. Eats dust. Um, all the days of thy life. And enmity, okay, all the days, eats dust all days of life. All right. Of thy life. We're going to come back to some of these. We're just writing them down now, just so we can have some reference. And the next part of the verse. And enmity I put between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So enmity between thee, the serpent, and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. We have the same enmity between thy seed and her seed. He doth bruise thee the head, and thou dost bruise him the heel. Okay. Last part. And he... Now, the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the serpent. And the serpent is going to bruise... The heel of the seed of the woman. Okay, so seed is also very important. So now, we want to come here first because this is the garden. This is the garden that um, was east of Eden. I mean, this is the garden of Eden. And in the garden of Eden, uh, God laid out that we had trees of their same kind. Uh... Adam was there, Eve was there, the serpent was there, the tree of life, the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, a fig tree because of the fig leaves, and all the other trees that were there as well. So now we're going to go to what we consider snakes. We're going to go to vipers. And the first place we're going to go when we're going to discuss vipers is in Matthew. And Matthew happens to be in 3.7. There's a parallel verse in Luke 3.7 as well. And this is John the Baptist. This is coming of the reign of God. John the Baptist comes first. And what does he say in verse 7? And having seen many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming about his baptism, he said to them, 
broad of vipers. Who did show thee to flee from the coming wrath? Bear therefore fruits, look at that fruits, comes from a tree, worthy of the reformation, and do not think to say in yourselves, a father we have, Abraham. For I say unto you that God is able out of these stones to raise children to Abraham, and now also the axe unto the root of the tree, trees is laid. Every tree, therefore, not bearing good fruit, is hewn down, and to the fire is cast. So, immediately, we're talking about trees, we're talking about fruit, we're talking about seed, because the seed is in the fruit. And again, John the Baptist is also hedging their potential argument of Abraham, and that is very important because John 8 discusses Abraham um, and Jesus uh, talking to uh, the Jews, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and saying to them that they are their father, the devil. And uh, one of the arguments they tried to say is that they were of Abraham. So this is already telling us of a future uh, conversation in John 8, which we're not going to read today. You know, we've covered that plenty of times in um, other videos. So we have the snakes, the vipers, because remember, just like we saw that on thy belly dost thou go, snake. They eat the dust all the days of thy life. Enmity, thee, the serpent, and the woman, thy seed of the serpent, it has enmity with the woman's seed. The head of the serpent will be bruised from um, uh, the woman's seed. He shall bruise thy head and you shall bruise the heel. So what we're seeing here is John the Baptist is telling us who the snakes are. A viper is a snake. And he says, broad of vipers. Okay, let's go to another place. Now we'll go to Luke. Luke 3, 7. Um, let's look at 3, 6. Okay, uh, 3, 6 for a second. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh shall shall see the salvation of God. And what's the very next verse? Then said he to the multitudes coming forth to be baptized by him, broad of vipers, who did prompt you to flee from the coming wrath? Make therefore fruits worthy of reformation, and begin not to say within yourselves, we have a father Abraham, for I say unto you that God is able out of these stones to raise children to Abraham and already the axe unto the root of the trees is laid and every tree therefore not making good fruit remember the knowledge of good and evil the good fruit those not making good fruit is cut down and to the fire it is cast and through the multitudes were questioning him saying what then shall we do so in this, uh, in this parallel uh, passage, three seven, it starts off. All flesh shall see. Then he said to the multitudes. Whereas when we go to Matthew three seven, three seven. It's also talking separately of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the multitudes and the Pharisees and Sadducees that would use the Abraham argument are the ones that John the Baptist is talking about, the broad of vipers. So Matthew 7, this is really important. Matthew 7, Luke 7. In Matthew 7, it's the Pharisees 
and the Sadducees. And Luke 7 is the multitudes. Now, he hedged their argument that if they're going to say Abraham, that that's not going to help them. So the only people that would normally say Abraham would be in the multitudes, would be the Jews, the Pharisees, Sadducees. That's who are the broader vipers. Now let's see another place. Let's see where that takes us. So now we're going to go to Matthew 12, 34, but we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to start at 32. Matthew 12, 32. And whoever may speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven to him. But whoever may speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven to him, neither in this age nor in the, that which is coming. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For from the fruit... Is the tree known? This is paralleling what John the Baptist says. They are saying the same words so far. Talking about the same tree, good fruit. And what's the very next verse? 34. Broad of vipers. How are ye able to speak good things being evil? Now we had touched upon this before. That there is no truth in them. So then how are they able to speak good things being evil? We know that's not possible. For out of the abundance of the heart doth the mouth speak. Jesus said there is no truth in them. This is John 8. And this also ties back to John 8 with what we had spoken about Abraham. The good man out of the good treasure of the heart doth put forth the good things. And the evil man out of the evil treasure doth put all forth evil things and I say unto you that every idle word that men may speak they shall be they shall give for it reckoning in a day of judgment we are still talking about what you're going to speak we started out reading in Matthew uh, 12 and it starts about where we started is about the Holy Spirit and now Jesus jumps to talk to the broader vipers and then we're back to idle words. So what they speak, are they're, they're going to be against the Holy Spirit. And, and isn't it interesting, we've spoken this, there's no truth in them. So if there's no truth in them, then they're going to speak lies and they are going to be against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, truth and light and the way to God the spirit of God uh, the true worshipers of God are the ones that worship in truth and in spirit and that's what Jesus said to the Samaritan woman okay now we're going to jump to another place now we're going to go to Matthew 23 and again we'll go just a little bit before uh, so we'll start to 29 29 uh, Matthew 23 29 woe to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites because ye build the sepulchers of the prophets and adorn the tombs of the righteous and say if we had been in the days of our fathers we would not have partake have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets so that ye testify to yourselves that ye are the sons of them who did murder the prophets. And ye, ye fill up the measure of your fathers, serpents, broad of vipers. How may ye escape the judgment of Guiana? Because of this, lo, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, and them ye will kill and crucify. And of them ye will scourge in your synagogues and will pursue from city to city that on you may come all the righteous blood being poured out on the earth from the blood of Abel, 
the righteous. So we're going all the way back to Cain now. Unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the sanctuary and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent was there. And Adam and Eve failed to understand the consequences of what, what partaking of um, the, the subtility of the serpent and the consequences that that would yield. John the Baptist sees them walking over to him at the Jordan River and immediately... He tells them they're broad of vipers. Jesus tells them, broad of vipers, they're not going to escape. There's no truth in them. This is, we're supposed to see and spot these serpents. And the serpents are always the liars. The liars are the children of the devil. We know this. We can go to John 8.44 or John 8. Uh, would encourage everyone to read John 8 because there's so much in John 8. Um, again, we start from 13. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou of thyself dost testify, thy testimony is not true. So the Pharisee says that Jesus' testimony is not true. Jesus answered and said of them, And if I testify of myself, my testimony is true. John 8 is talking about the truth. What Jesus is talking about is what he had seen with his father. And the, the, what the Jews do is they do that which they've seen of their father. And then when we go to 844, it tells us again. Uh, Wherefore ye do not know my speech, because ye are not able to hear my word, the word of truth. Ye are of a father, the devil, and the desires of your father ye will ye will to do. He was a manslayer from the beginning, and in the truth he hath not stood, because there is no truth in him. When one may speak of the falsehood of his own, he speaketh because he is a liar, also his father." When Jesus is talking about broader vipers, or we're talking about the serpent, we're not looking. We're not talking about snakes. We're talking about the liars. That's what we're talking about. In our daily existence, if we're going to be in the truth or in the lie will tell us what fruit that we're coming from what tree. What fruit is inside, what seeds are inside of you? Are they truth? Or are they lies? Whatever you spend your energy on is what you're going to be. When you're in the truth, you will have a foundation you will have clarity, peace of mind, and that doesn't mean that things are just going to be rosy and you know everybody's going to have just like this you know, very carefree, perfect life. That's not what it's about. But you'll be able to weather the storm, the storm of the, of the life. If you're in the lies, you're in a delusion. And for you to exist in your lies, then you're going to be the one that's going to be killing Abel and crucifying Jesus because Jesus is the truth the light and the way when people lie in their life they're the ones killing Abel they're the ones crucifying Jesus they're crucifying the truth the light, and the way to God. So if you're going to crucify the truth, the light, and the way, then what you're going to have is lies, darkness,
and lost. Because you're not going to have the way to God, to Yahweh God, or Jehovah God as uh, the YLT Bible has it recorded. Truth, light, and the way is Jesus. If you're going to be in the lies, then you're going to you're going to be living on lies. Your lies are your foundation. You're going to be in darkness. And you're lost. This is a big deal. So, this is not the longest video right now. But, the bottom line is, the Bible does show us to spot the serpents, to spot the liars, to spot the vipers. We must maintain our truth in the truth do not enable liars do not lie or as um, what Adam and Eve did they reproduced the lie what hast thou done is what God said to Eve so let's go to Genesis 3 Genesis 3 uh, 13 and Jehovah God saith unto the woman what this thou hast done she reproduced the lie and we also know that Cain is fathered by the father of lies hope this helps um, hope your life improves as you come to the knowledge of the truth and you start speaking truth, your soul will prosper and you will prosper in your life. A lot of things will come to light. You will reconcile your past and your future will be with greater peace. God bless.